Hi there, I'm Robin, and today we'll talk about troubleshooting before fitting a new turbo. Troubleshooting of the exhaust back pressure. A slight back pressure is a normal thing that's present in any exhaust system. The system piping, mufflers, and treatment devices generate some resistance for the flow of gases produced during combustion. By failures, mainly by restrictions present within the exhaust line, the back pressure can raise drastically. All engine manufacturers specify the maximum allowed back pressure, and an excessive resistance can quickly affect the engine efficiency increasing fuel consumption and causing severe failures of the turbocharger as well. Here's a list of effects provoked by an excessive exhaust back pressure. Improper boost pressures, lack of power, increased fuel consumption, unbalanced air-fuel ratio, increased emissions, increased temperature of the exhaust, premature turbocharger failures, shaft seals leaks, mechanical damages of the wheels and shaft, now, if you want to see specifically what can happen with the turbo because of excessive back pressure, see my video on reviewing the common turbo failures. Before fitting a new turbo, you have to make sure the exhaust system is free of excessive back pressure. Despite the engine design, the back pressure measured in the exhaust right after the turbo should not exceed 0.3 bar or 4.5 psi. If the pressure is higher, you have to find out the root cause within the system. A clogged catalytic converter, clogged DPF filters, or mufflers or tie pipes coming apart internally, they can all be sources of the excessive back pressure. There are several methods of checking the pressure, but the overall idea is to measure the back pressure right after the turbo and before the exhaust treatment devices, where clogs and restrictions typically occur. Here are my tips on how to conduct the measurement in an easy way with tools you already have in your garage. Method 1. Direct pressure measure. The exhaust line elements are tightly coupled, forming the exhaust line from its start at the turbine outlet to the end by the muffler. There are, however, some spots where you can hook up a pressure gauge to determine the system back pressure. In gasoline engines, the oxygen sensor is a good place to take the measurement. By modifying an old sensor, you can connect your pressure gauge to the exhaust. Cut the wire in the housing in a way to leave the threat and to connect the housing with the gauge hose. You can also use some dedicated adapters to connect the gauge through the oxygen sensor port. If access to the catalytic converter is easy, you can also drill a new access port in front of the converter. The best way is to drill a hole in the welding seam where the material is thick and stable. Using a piece of brake line and a screw tap, you can make the gauge connection port just before the catalytic converter or any other device, such as a DPF filter, whenever applied. A breather from a brake caliper is another option that you can apply when drilling the access and making the port. By diesel applications with DPF devices, you can apply one of the existing pressure or temperature sensor sockets to connect the gauge. Once connected, start the engine and wait until it gets into operational temperature. Then measure the back pressure in the entire range of the engine load. It should ideally go from idle to high revs once driving. If higher than 0.3 bar or 4.5 psi pressure is noticed, the catalytic converter or the DPF will suffer from some clogs that must be eliminated. In a majority of gasoline engines, you can check for possible exhaust line restrictions by measuring the intake manifold vacuum level and comparing it to OE data. All that you need to do this check is to hook up your vacuum gauge to some vacuum source on the intake manifold and after the throttle body. In this engine, I found this spot that will be an easy, accessible vacuum source. Using a T-connector, we hook up the gauge. The intake vacuum is going to be at its peak idle. However, by getting the engine on higher revs, it should drop off to zero as there is no intake vacuum by open throttle. So, as you can see here, this engine is running at between 17 to 18 inches of vacuum at idle which means there's probably no restrictions in the exhaust, so this is a nicely running engine. Method two, temperature measure. Measuring the temperature of the exhaust line devices can also help you with determining possible inner restrictions, causing excessive back pressure. Here, either an infrared thermometer or an OBD diagnostics tool can be used to measure. Start with getting the engine on the right operational temperature level. Then lift the car, allowing easy access to the exhaust line. Localize the catalytic converter or the DPF. 
Measure the temperature at the device inlet and outlet and compare the readings. If the temperature difference is higher than 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit, most likely there's an inner flow restriction causing the back pressure to raise. The same reading can be performed by onboard diagnostics if the vehicle applies temperature sensors by the treatment devices. Here, the overall values of the temperature will be higher, but the same rule applies. The difference between inlet and outlet should not be higher than 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. My last tip is on how to inspect the exhaust line for condensed water. Frequent short distance drives can result in soot building up in diesel applications, but for all engines, it'll also produce excessive water deposits in the exhaust. Depending on the exhaust design, it can fit as much as five to seven liters of liquid stored inside. This will create a massive resistance for the exhaust flow and must be eliminated. Dripping water from the muffler is a common sign of this problem. Remember, the turbo is an advanced component that works across various systems in the vehicle. A thorough troubleshooting of the link system should always happen before the part replacement to eliminate any other failures. Thanks for watching. Once you're sure your exhaust is free of excessive back pressure, you're good to go and inspect for further system issues before replacing the turbo. I'm Robin, and thanks for letting me show you what's under the hood. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe. And ring the bell so you get a notification every time I upload a new video. And if there's something specific that you want me to do a video on in the future, don't forget to let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you next time.